Training Data Efficient Image Transformer or DATE in short is one of the first papers to show that it is practical to train transformers for tasks on images. The paper not only proposes distillation as a training approach to train transformers but also provides a bunch of tips and tricks to make the training super efficient. The paper shows a straight comparison of vision transformer with DATE and clearly DATE outperforms vision transformer by a good margin. Not only that, DATE requires far less data and far less compute power to produce a high performance image classification model. For those of us who only have limited compute power and are wondering how to train the vision transformer on a custom dataset, DATE is the answer. Let's learn about DATE in this video. Vision Transformer or VIT was the first paper which showed that transformers can be used for computer vision tasks. It trained on a massive dataset of 300 million samples and the dataset is an in-house dataset from Google and it's not yet available to download. On the other hand, DATE is trained only using the well-known ImageNet which is a 10 times smaller dataset. Because of the massive dataset size, Vision Transformer needs extensive compute power for training, making it impractical to train models in the limited data regime. On the other hand, the training time for date is 2-3 to three days on a single 4GPU or 8GPU machine. Now this is an impressive leap in performance, so let's delve deeper and try to understand date much better. To understand date, we need to know distillation, regularization, and augmentation. So knowledge distillation is when you transfer knowledge from one model or network to another network by some means. Regularization is when you try to reduce overfitting of a network to a given limited training data so that your model does not learn the noise in the data but the actual information from the data. Augmentation is when we create multiple samples of the same input with some variations. Though these are some of the techniques used in DATE, the key contributor is distillation. So let's recap distillation first and see how it is used in this paper. Let's say we have a neural network in classic machine learning setting that recognizes cats and dogs. To train this network, we first pass the cat image through the model and get the representation or embeddings of the image. The embedding is then passed through a softmax function to get the probabilities for the input classes dog and cat. We then compute a cross entropy loss comparing with the ground truth labels and train the entire network. With distillation, we distill the knowledge from another network called the teacher network or the teacher model. We first get the embeddings from the teacher network. We now pass it through a softmax with the special temperature parameter tau to get the output probabilities. The significance of temperature is to smoothen the output probabilities. For instance, if the softmax function says the probability of cat is 0.9, with the temperature set to 0.5, it only says the probability of cat is 0.7. With the output of the teacher network, we compute a distillation loss between the teacher output and the ground truth and sum the loss with the cross entropy loss of our student model in order to train the student model. DATE proposes a modified version of distillation approach we just saw. The teacher network that they use is a state-of-the-art convolutional neural network that is pre-trained on ImageNet. The student architecture is the modified version of transformer. The main modification is that the output of the CNN is also passed as an input to the transformer. While computing the distillation loss, we do what is called the hard distillation where the temperature is equal to 1. 
What it means is that we literally take the label of the teacher network as the true label. We then sum up this distillation loss with the cross entropy of the transformer and train the transformer. Now with that information, if we take a look at this figure from the paper, I think we gain a better understanding of date. So the class tokens and patch tokens is the same as the vision transformer. They are put through several layers of attention and we obtain the classes. On top of that, we also have the distillation tokens which are complementary to the class tokens but come from the teacher network. The authors have experimented and shown in the paper that the distillation token trained with the teacher token is what provides the impressive improvement in performance. They've also experimented with several variations of this date architecture. Date TI is a tiny model with 5 million parameters. Date S is a small model with 22 million parameters. Date B is the largest model and is the same as Vision Transformer B with 86 million parameters. Date B384 is the model fine-tuned on high resolution training images of size 384 by 384. And finally, the date with this symbol stands for the proposed distillation procedure. Now I've been mentioning about the teacher network which is a convolutional neural network. But which network do they use? The answer is that they use a state-of-the-art network proposed in this NeurIPS 2020 paper. And they went for the biggest 16GF model which has the highest accuracy of 82.9 on ImageNet. Why? Because the better the teacher network, the better our trained transformer will be. As can be seen from the results, hard distillation seems to be quite effective compared to soft distillation as it reaches an accuracy of 83% that is not possible otherwise. We can also observe that the distillation tokens bring better accuracy when used along with class tokens instead of just using the class tokens as in the vision transformer. Lastly, increasing the training epoch and training for longer time somehow seems to be more effective when it comes to transformers. Until this paper, training a transformer on images wasn't easy, so they should have adapted quite a few tricks and strategies to train the transformer successfully. This table summarizes some of the augmentation and regularization tricks that they used in order to arrive at the impressive results proposed. Let's briefly look at each of them. Repeat augmentation is when we first augment images in a batch and use all the images together. In this simple example of a batch of a dog and a cat, we augment them and make a batch of four images instead of two. Auto augment is when you search for the best augmentation policy for the given data rather than manually defining some augmentations irrespective of the data. Rand augment can be implemented in two lines of code as shown here. The idea is that you randomly choose n augmentations from a pool of augmentations and simply use the chosen ones. Random erasing is super easy too. You randomly erase a rectangular patch in the input image and use the erased image. In case of mix-up, you add up or do some arithmetic of the inputs to arrive at a new training sample. In cut mix, you cut out a region from a given input and stick in another sample with different label and modify the label accordingly. So to summarize, these are the tricks that, that, that were experimented in the paper and in this ablation studies table, they present the results of use using each of them. While the paper says that distillation tokens bring something to the table, we are yet to figure out what exactly it is that contributes to the better performance. Clearly, it's bringing something quite different from the class tokens. Also, let's not forget that the teacher network used here is already trained on ImageNet. So clearly, we have to wait to see a standalone transformer architecture trained independently without depending on any other networks. 
While we eagerly wait for that transformer architecture, I would like to thank you so much for watching patiently till the end and supporting the community by leaving your comments below. Thank you very much.